Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the vlog. Hope everyone is having an awesome day. We are back with some C8 Corvette news and it's not the most exciting or happy news, but it is news nonetheless. And as always, real quick, if you are stopping by for the first time, please support the channel by hitting the subscribe button, hitting the thumbs up button, and leaving a comment down below to show the engagement score of this video being stronger so YouTube recommends it to more people. And so, diving right in, like the title and thumbnail indicates, we are going to be experiencing another plant closure at Bowling Green Assembly due to supply shortages. Another week of production will be lost. So from what we know right now, February 21st through February 24th, which is next Tuesday to Friday, the Corvette Assembly plant is going to be closed due to supplier parts shortages. And since Monday is a holiday for the Union being President's Day, we are going to see a full five days of production closure for the C8 Corvette. And for those that may not have experienced this, if your build date is coming up this week, what this effectively means is likely everything is going to get shifted or pushed back about a week. And I think this is starting to become a norm because every quarter it seems there is one week of production shut down. The last one we saw was October 17th through the 21st, which I did cover on the channel. And so having covered the last few, I'm starting to notice that every quarter there's about one week where it seems they're closing down production to probably allow the supplier parts availability to meet up with production so they can keep the well-oiled machine of Bowling Green Assembly running good. And as much as this stinks for people who had production dates coming up next week or the week after, two of the last three production shutdowns did follow at some point a couple weeks after an additional shift added to a weekend day to kind of make up for a small portion of what was lost for the whole week. They obviously can't make up all of it, but General Motors does do a fantastic job of playing catch up when they're hit with these kinds of supplier issues. They haven't officially confirmed if this is going to impact just Stingrays or Z06s. I suspect both because they're going to shut down the whole plant for a week for production. But again, that's something that General Motors has not confirmed officially, whether it's going to impact Z06s or just Stingrays. We did see a slowdown in Z06 production at the beginning of the month in the first week of February. But it seems they've caught up with about 20 or so Z06s being built every day and we're approaching almost a thousand Z06s built total to date. We're likely crossing that mark as you come around to watch this video. And really that's everything that I have to cover in today's video, short, simple, and to the point. Stay tuned for the second half because I did receive my gift or my order memorabilia plaque for the C8R. I'm still missing a couple so I'll go over that in the later half of this video. So just kind of kick back if you were here just for the news, definitely take off. I appreciate the support, the thumbs up, subscribe, and comment down below. Let's have a good laugh about the welcome kit. Alright, and so it's finally here. I didn't really know where to bucket this video with. And lo and behold, we have our gift for the C8 Corvette. Cut it open. I lost my box cutter, unfortunately, so let's see what's inside the box. So this is the welcome kit that you're supposed to get with the C8 Corvette. It comes with your card for Run Fellows and it comes with an actual model for your C8 Corvette. Now I didn't get the one for the red car or the yellow car so I don't even really know which one's in the box. It might even be the 70th anniversary edition. But let's go ahead and see which one they sent us. So first things first, it looks like we have a card. That does have some personal information on it but it's more of a thank you card from General Motors for buying a C8 Corvette. And then inside the box, ta-da, this is for the Accelerate Yellow C8 Corvette. Take a look at this thing, everybody. It's painted in Accelerate Yellow. I wish I had this stripe to kind of match. Definitely needs a good cleaning, but it's a nice little model of the C8R that we had in 2022. This thing is actually pretty heavy for what it is. And then you also get a plaque inside that you can put this on. It looks like we finally got this after a full maybe 14 months after taking delivery and purchasing the 2022 C8. The box itself is pretty cool. It is magnetic. I think this is one of the things that they said was a holdup. Unfortunately, I never got the one for the 2020 car, the, the Torch Red C8 that we first started on the channel with. And I am a bit of a geek, so I do really like collecting this kind of stuff. And unfortunately, the only way I was able to get this particular one is after about 10 to 12 hours of banging my head off the wall with the Corvette Concierge, they finally ended up putting in an order to get one of these drop shipped to me. I still genuinely have no idea where the red one is and if I'm even going to get one for the 70th anniversary of this since I didn't really order that car as much as found it on the lot. 
And one thing I did notice is along with the letter, it actually comes with your placard to use at the Ron Fellows School. And if you look here, it says it expires on 10-29-2022, which I don't know, is about four months after it's already expired. So again, this kind of just sums up some of the Corvette Chevrolet experience. If their product wasn't as good as it is compared to anything else on the market, really nothing competes with the C8 Corvette with that much performance for the price point. They can kind of get away with some of the screw-ups that they do in terms of customer support, customer experience, and the whole buying experience like many are having trying to get a Z06 right now. But yeah, if you want one of these, then I think the best thing that you can do is reach out to the Corvette concierge team on Corvette Chat. They're going to give you a phone number. I highly, highly recommend calling the phone number and not doing the online chat. I've wasted hours on that process. And once you call the Corvette concierge team, oh, this thing it does look really cool. I'm going to enjoy having this on my wall or on my desk. But yeah, once you call the Corvette concierge team, there's like one person, supposedly her name is Danielle, that punches in the orders for these. And there's like hundreds of people that have had bad experiences trying to get their kind of Corvette welcome kit, if you will. And so they have this system where they punch it in and then for months you can keep following up. And eventually, if you're lucky, one will show up. But I still didn't get the one for the red car, so I really don't know what the deal is with that. But again, at the end of the day, this is very cool. And it's actually magnetic to the base, so it sticks to the um, bottom platform. So it's kind of a pretty cool layout. But yeah, so that's what you get with the welcome kit. I was really hoping to open that box and be surprised with two of these. One for the red car and one for the yellow car. But it looks like I'll have to continue to bang my head off the wall with Corvette customer support. Just because I'm a nerd that likes to collect this stuff. But if you haven't gotten yours, that's really the only process that General Motors has. It's not a good one. It's not really a fun one, to be honest with you. I've no joke spent probably 12 to 15 hours on hold or, you know, talking with reps and trying to explain to them. And so it is what it is, but at least it's important for me to try to share what that process is in case hopefully at least help somebody else out there that's wondering where their welcome kit went. As we eagerly await the Z06, now I hope we have one in the summer, if not, like I've said a couple times before, and I do plan on shopping for some other brand products that are in that like low 100s price range for performance, like the McLaren 12C or the 650S. Or honestly, the McLaren GT is really high up on my radar right now because that's a 2020 car that's now pushing like 160-ish, which is outside of my price range, but because I have a Lincoln Navigator coming in, I need to be a little bit cautious on what my sports car budget's looking like. So that's all I have for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a big old thumbs up. If you have not already, definitely go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And as always, until the very next video, I look forward to seeing all of you in the comment section below.